Hey everyone, this is Joe Scar. We're going to take a look at the new TP 6.8 VDBs. So I'll just be a quick intro to get you up and going. Let's create a TP, create a dynamic set, I'm going to create one called Birth. Um, let's stay organized. Let's put that TP on a layer. Oops, TRP. Okay, and then we'll go ahead back and we're going to create a teapot to get started. All right. Here inside birth, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring that teapot into TP. Let's create a group called VDB just to stay organized. Let's make it kind of a purplish color. And so we'll put that teapot into the VDB group instance its shape. Okay. Now in this dynamic set, we're going to stay organized. We're going to call it VDB. VDB. We're going to create one called input or init init and output. So here inside init we're going to go ahead and create our open VDB. The open VDB is a container that holds all the grids that can interact. Um, and it's important to know in this TP ver implementation of VDB that each particle can each particle carries around its own grids. So each particle will have its own grids data uh, that can each be modified. So our job is to learn how to control that data um, in order to make it do what we want. So the easiest type of grid to create is uh, OpenBDB. This is where we create our grids. We're going to go ahead and add a distance field. These, of course, are all the other uh, TP types of uh, fields that we can add. For now, distance is real easy. It's got a name, it's got a TP type, and it's got an open VDB type. So you can see that the open VDB type of this TP distance is level set 32. All right, so let's go ahead and hide that source geo layer. Let's get back in here. Let's make sure we are displaying stuff. I'm also going to set my simulation start to be the first frame of the scene. Um, we're set up for film work, so we, we're set to film uh, 24 FPS, and standard practice is um, the first frame of the actual shot's 1001. So we like to start at 1000, so we have a safety frame in the beginning. We tell TP the sim start's going to be 1001. Okay, so step forward. Yeah, there's our TP teapot. Of course, the, v the open VDB container's there, and it's got grids available, but we're not putting anything into that grid for that particle yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, might as well do it here. And um, actually, no, you know what? Let's let's. We found a pretty good practice is to keep all the um, the initialization stuff separate from the actual creation. Um, I'm just going to call it mod. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to take the particle's shape and use that to create a distance field. We're going to go into the OpenVDB SDF, Sign Distance Field. So if you can see there are a whole bunch of nice operators here to work with. Um, it's going to take a while to understand how they all interplay and how to utilize them best, but um, hopefully we'll be able to have some time to create some more videos. So Shape to Volume is what we're going to use. It takes the particle shape and puts it in the volume. And remember, each particle can have, um, it stores its own grid volume data. And all of that data exists within this OpenVDB container. This OpenVDB container can be used by multiple different particle groups. And if they are all part of the same OpenVDB container, then all those particle groups can have their grids interact. OK, shape to volume. We need to know which OpenVDB are we going to be putting this volume data into, who's going to contain our data, or who manages it. Okay, You could bring this in twice to two different OpenVDBs if you want as well. Which volume P group? Well, we're going to be uh, the volume data, the particles who uh, have that volume data are these VDB particles. It's an arbitrary name, you can call it whatever you want, of course. Okay, and because we're taking particle shape to generate the volume, it wants to know when we generate the distance field, it's a level set type, this is the grid that's where we're going to store that distance data. Of course, we could also add two distance fields if we wanted, and then shape to volume would give us the option to decide which one to put that data into. Okay, 
there's also reference uh, data we can store, volume, fog data we can create. Of course, volume fog, there is no fog grid yet, so that shows none. Let's go ahead and let's actually remove this, and then we're going to go ahead and create a fog grid. So boom, automatically, you can see the open VDB type of that is fog32, TP refers to it as fog. And so when we generate this shape, use the particle shape to create its volume data, we'll also go ahead and create fog data. You can create velocity data, blah, blah, blah. Update um, basically refers to when do we want to create this. Um, over time would be subsample or automatic, or if we just want to do it once, single's fine. Then the voxel size. This is going to control the resolution. And then the ba exterior bandwidth decides how many grid cells outside of the shape, how far out do we create data, and then of course the interior bandwidth is how far inside. Alright, let's go ahead and step forward. Actually, you know what, let's turn Edit on the Fly off so we get real-time updates. And still the same old particle mesh as expected. What we need to do is uh, we need some way to either convert this data into a mesh, or the first thing that we're going to do in order to get used to dealing with VDB is we're going to show the VDB, show the data for that. We put this in the output uh, dyn set. So the show VDB, of course, needs to know which container am I dealing with, who is the manager for all this volume data. The P group, which one of those particles um, are we going to be showing data for, and then which grid on that P group in that open VVDB are we going to show data for. Let's go ahead and show the distance field. And you can see, boom, right away we get the nice bounding box that tells us that there is data. Um, if there's no, if you have this turned on and there's no green box, it means there's no data in your in your guy. Let's turn, we can just see that when we turn mod off. Okay, bounding box, you're fine. Show me interior data. We can see we get a bunch of whole bunch of little dots and cells in there. Now the dots are fine and they're nice and fast, but you know what? The type of display, if we set that to vector, we get some more interesting data. And what that does is it's going to show us um, length data. It shows us a gradient of uh, between these two ranges. Essentially, this is the distance um, to the surface. And so we can, of course, change that vector scale if we want to not have such long vectors displaying and make it easier. And then the maximum number of voxels we can control. It, there's a limit on it so that we don't uh, blow up our display and show too much RAM, use too much RAM. We also set that max voxels to zero. We can see the actual uh, resolution of this. Let's go ahead and switch this back to point. And I want to show you when we go back to shape to volume, we set the voxel size higher. Of course, we get that. So that's all fine. Now, you'll also notice at certain uh, numbers that the teapot doesn't really seem to generate proper data. We're missing some, some cells up in there. And why would that be? Well, it's probably because the teapot's not actually closed geo. So we're going to put a cap holes modifier on it, and now we'll see that we get nice um, closed mesh there. With it off and on. Back in the TP. Oops, hide that layer, show the TP layer. Okay, now you can see now that it's closed, we get nice data. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go ahead and set the voxel to 2 to keep it easy and light. And now let's also go ahead and look at the exterior. On the exterior, we see that we get those um, dots outside. Let's go ahead and show vector. And if we change the right value, this is going to allow us to see that to be on the right value of this grid or gradient, which is white, would have to be six units away. So we can see these are about six, and then as we get closer towards zero, we get to blue. All right, enough of show. Thank you. Interesting bug. If you turn off the dyn set, it still displays, but you can turn off the operator itself to turn it off. Okay, what we're going to do now is we've got shape to volume, and we want to actually show a uh, open VDB mesh. Um, we've taken the particle shape and turned it into a volume data, uh, distance data. And now what we want to do is go the other direction. We want to generate a mesh from that volume data. So in order to do that, it's going to be in the 
open in VDB SDF category. It's going to be volume to shape. So particle shape to the volume, particle volume data to its shape, to the particle shape. And it's going to replace that shape data. Of course, same kind of thing. We need to know which open VDB container is going to be managing our data, which group inside there we're going to be affecting the VDB particles, and which distance field we're going to use the distance field. So as soon as we pick that you can see that we get this nice blobby um, kind of mesh teapot here. Fantastic. If we come back to shape to volume and we start to decrease our uh, voxels, get smaller voxels, you can see it's going to get finer and if you go too low you will consume a bunch of RAM and you'll be wishing you had a bigger machine. So work hard and save up your money. All right. That's the easy way to create uh, particle shape data right there. Now, of course, there's all kinds of options on these things, and so you're going to want to read through all the help file. Um, fortunately, you know the help file is online, so it's being uh, constantly updated, or fairly constantly. And there's also a bunch of uh, options here. We can relax disoriented data. We can use the reference grid um, and adaptively sample it. Um, even the volume itself, we can turn on adaptive or adaptivity and that's going to basically try to optimize it for us. But you got to watch out, you might get a little bit of uh, some pinch faces. So there's also the auto smoothing group and so you can set a face threshold. We can relax this mesh a little bit so it's not so uptight. Set the, how many iterations and then the smoothing value. Um, we can add mapping to it, um, or we can actually inherit the UVW mapping from our uh, source shape, or um, I think it's yeah, from the original shape, um, as well as face normal data. So we can kind of more closely mimic what we had there. Not exactly pretty at this resolution, but yeah, you get the idea. And then we can also turn on snap to surface, which will force that these uh, generated mesh face data to snap to the original shape location. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of other interesting things we can do. We can use uh, volume fog, render it with Arnold. We can start doing um, volume uh, booleans, uh, advecting these, um, having them update over time. We can copy grid data from one particle to another particle. Um, there's all kinds of exciting possibilities. So it's going to be great stuff. Um, definitely check out the sample files. CBIS has included a whole bunch in the drop eight scenes directory. Um, open these up, study them, and look for more videos from us here in the near future. So take care, have fun, and be safe. <laughs>